first of all, welcome to the session. And uh, I would really like to start by, you know, introducing uh, myself. I am Vishnu Vijay, proud and trammer, and the faculty for your uh, performance management paper, as well as I also take a few other papers, such as advanced performance management, audit and and advanced audit assurance as well. So, uh, and I've been, you know, teaching for quite the past few, uh, past few years as well. And uh, as for my professional experience, I work for a big four uh, firm, uh, you know, full time, and uh, you know, been guiding students for quite a few years now. So uh, I'd also like to know about you two as well. So uh, can Divya, can you please introduce yourself? No Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm an ACCA student, and. Uh... I came from CA background and I switched from CA to ACCA and mm -hmm. I am already graduate student. I am graduated become honors mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so I got six exemptions and uh, I'm starting from PM and FM and both subjects I took from you only from Fintram Global from Disha ma'am okay. and from you. Mm -hmm. So right. okay. my main motive for uh, this Zoom meeting was to uh, take guidance from you. So mm -hmm. I have to cope up with both the subjects and I want your guidance and plan. How can I just do it? Okay. Okay. So uh, that's great. And where are you based out of? I am based from uh, in Punjab. Punjab. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. And yes, we will be, uh, you know, discussing, you know, a plan which you can uh, incorporate for the upcoming months as well. That's, uh, that's uh, yes, great so. that you remind me, reminded me that. So, uh, Ruchi, can you uh, go? Hello, sir. Uh, so, uh, I'm a working professional. I have already cleared uh, from ACC and then FM. I did self-study mm -hmm. for those papers, but uh, I could not clear, uh, I mean, uh, performance management three times. Just by a mm -hmm. few marks, I got failed. Only four or five, some something like that. But yes, mm -hmm. I I took admission uh, in Fintran classes. I, I'm, I'm already going through your lectures and it is really helpful, especially the tricky theory part. Sometimes mm -hmm. because I observed in exams, in theory part, uh, the, the true or false were uh, mentioned that uh, we got we got confused. Mm -hmm. Yes, the way you are explaining the things, it is really helpful. And my, I think my concepts are getting more clearer than before. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, that's, that's, that's good to know. So where are you based out of? So uh, right now I'm working in Gurugram. Uh, mm -hmm. My hometown is in Kanpur. Okay. So what are you working as? I'm working as an assistant manager at Deloitte. Okay. Okay. That's uh, good to know. Uh, and Divya, are you a full-time student or are you a working professional as well? No, sir. I worked for approximately five months only in Gurgaon based company in outsourcing, based in mm -hmm. finance and accounts. But mm -hmm. then I took a leave. I thought that I couldn't manage both of study and work. So after completing both my subjects, I hope I will complete and then I will join uh, Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. Yeah. You want to focus more on your studies, which is uh, great. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, let's uh, get started with the session. So the main agenda for our session as of now is just, just to give an, give you an idea as to what the, uh, you know, PM uh, sessions is all about and, uh, you know, the exam structures, exam tips and tricks, and what, what your, you know, plan should be for the upcoming months as well. And uh, just to be uh, clear with uh, one thing, you're, I know that you're all based out of Gurgaon, but, uh, you know, I personally am not a Hindi speaker, so, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, fully in English just to give you a heads up on that. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen once. once so first of all, let's understand as to what performance management is. But yeah, before that, I also want your update on your current status since you both, you know, signed up for the sessions. I'd like to understand what your current status is as well. So Ricky, if you can uh, explain that real quick. I mean, how much sessions have you watched as of now or uh, Ruji? Sir, sir I, uh, today only I purchased your, uh, that oh, really? uh, okay. plan for performance management. Oh, okay. I, okay. I saw at least four to five lectures of Disha ma'am, but uh, for you, I purchased mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, no problem. And Ruji, what about you? Yeah, so I saw uh, six lectures of yours, still relevant uh, uh, costing. I watched your videos and I already mm -hmm. saw that uh, one performance management question set for part, part 
one okay. so mm -hmm. uh, except relevant question i did all the questions and wherever mm -hmm. i got stuck i watched your videos and then i reworked on it okay okay that's uh, great i just want to you know know where you are have you watched it entirely because if you have already watched it entirely then you know a few of this the portion of this video is going to be a bit you know uh, a bit boring for you so, so yeah uh, so just wanted to uh, give you an overall idea as to what the performance management is so what is performance management this is something that i've already uh, i believe you already know it's as the name suggests it's the ma it's managing the performance of the organization itself and that is exactly what you will be learning through the various syllabus areas that we have throughout uh, throughout this particular paper, and uh, one thing that I like to emphasize here is basically that you know there are students who think that the PM paper is uh, primarily or majorly about all the calculations that we learn, but that's not necessarily the case uh, because when it comes to the PM paper, it's like fifty percent discussion and fifty percent calculation. Calculation is important, but uh, the discussion or the theoretical aspects are equally important. And if you ask why, well, that basically that's basically because if you uh, it's it's basically uh, test your logical thinking. I mean, uh, the uh, logical thinking skill is a bit more important when it comes to the PM paper. And if you want to understand how the numbers work, then you will have to understand the meaning behind the numbers, right? So that's basically why uh, theory should be given equal importance here as well. So. Uh, Another aspect of the uh, performance management would be that, uh, you know, when you're practicing questions, don't just focus on uh, the calculations or, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the MCQs or uh, section C questions, which involves the uh, calculations. Don't just focus on that, but also uh, try to type in your answer or practice by typing in the theoretical answers as well, because you might you know, get the particular answer easily when you read through it. Yes, that's obviously possible. But when it comes to the exam, it, it may not you know, quickly come up in your mind. So which is exactly it's, it, why it's equally important to practice the theoretical questions as well. So when I say practice, I mean to type down your answers. I like to say write down, but you know, that's a bit outdated now. So yeah. OK, uh, moving on. <clears throat> so first of all, let's uh, quickly go through the syllabus of PM. Now, uh, the first syllabus area that we have is part A, which is information technologies and system for organizational performance. And this particular area is regarding all the, I would say, uh, latest industry updates that has uh, happened uh, within the business era as of now. And it primarily focuses on the topics such as info, uh, information systems, data analytics, et cetera. And uh, if you are, let's say in the future, you know, planning to uh, upgrade to the or plan to attend the advanced performance management paper as well. There's a lot of in detail or in depth, uh, you know, concepts or technological concepts that has been that has come up within the syllabus of uh, APM as well. So uh, this particular syllabus area focuses on the basics of that particular set of topics. Now, uh, it's a it's a complete theory uh, based syllabus area, uh, as you may have uh, you know uh, known by watching through the lectures, and. Uh, I believe the primary questions that can come up in the exam would be in the uh, section E or section B areas as well. That's something that uh, we can expect uh, from this particular syllabus area. No, I, I don't think there would be much section C questions because that's focused on various other syllabus areas. Primarily, it can be tested as uh, you know MCQs. That's uh, something to keep in mind. Now, moving on to the next one, we have part B, which is specialist cost and management accounting techniques. So this is basically the costing related, uh, you know, uh, aspects that uh, you're going to learn. So you're going to learn the traditional, uh, you know, method of costing, such as absorption costing, which you may have, you know, learned about in various other uh, courses or various other uh, graduate degrees as well. Uh, you will learn about the basic stuff and a bit more uh, advanced stuff as well. Uh, so you're going to learn about uh, primarily about the uh, ABC, uh, activity-based costing. And then there would be, you'll learn about life cycle costing, you'll learn about, uh, there's another one, yeah, target costing, et cetera, environmental costing, et cetera. So these are the uh, costing techniques that you will be learning here. And it's all about, you know, uh, determining the cost or allocating costs to various departments or determining the price of a particular product. That's basically as to what the syllabus area primarily focuses on. And then we come across part C, which is uh, decision-making techniques. 
So when it comes to uh, decision making techniques, this particular syllabus area is one of the core syllabus areas, I would say, because uh, you can expect questions to come up uh, in the section C from this particular uh, syllabus area. So uh, it's it's really important that you you know practice a lot of like scenario based or case study questions uh, in this particular set of topics. And speaking more about the content here, it's basically as I uh, stated earlier, it's all about the logical thinking here. So you will be required to make the best decision in a given scenario, and uh, there are a lot of techniques in doing that. For example, if you are determining uh, the best, let's say, order of manufacturing, then what are the things that you should consider? What are the? Uh, how do you determine or what to prioritize best? Or how can we maximize profits by efficiently, uh, you know, uh, providing a recommended order? So th these are the kind of things that you can uh, expect from this particular syllabus area. And more and about that, you know, there you would be, uh, you know, taking some managerial decisions in organizations. So uh, in order to, uh, whenever you make a decision, it has to be an informed decision, right? So in this particular scenario related questions from this particular syllabus area, what you have to understand is that you have to assess all the information provided to you. That's, that's something uh, of a key nature that you should always keep in mind, especially when practicing the questions. So whenever you are reading a scenario or reading through a particular, let's say, case study question, you should uh, definitely highlight all the important information and use that information, use every, uh, any and every information that has been provided in the scenario to answer that particular question or uh, to make a particular decision. So yeah, uh, let's get in another aspect, moving on. The syllabus part D, which is budgeting and control. Budgeting is uh, kind of an easy topic. At the same time, there's, uh, I would say, uh, a greater content to this particular syllabus area. That's the, uh, or the, I wouldn't call it the difficult part, but yeah, compared to all the other syllabus areas, it's a bit lengthier as well. So uh, the concepts are kind of easy, but if you face any issues in uh, various aspects, such as, uh, let's say, learning curve, or uh, let's say, uh, method in calculating the uh, learning curve rate. I believe learning curve is a you know a common area where students find a bit difficulty in, especially in the algebra calculations uh, uh, and things like that. So if you face any such difficulties, just let, let me know and we can perhaps maybe even discuss uh, about that particular set of topics on a live session as well, if uh, that's something that you're interested in. So yeah, moving on to the next aspect, part E, which is performance measurement and control. So performance measurement and control is basically where you measure the performance of an organization. Now, one key thing that, you know, most students uh, misunderstand here is, is the meaning of these two terms, that is performance management and performance measurement. Even though they seem similar, it's kind of, you know, entirely different things. In performance management, we take a look at the managerial aspects, right? We manage the performance through various, implementing various strategies, taking the decisions, etc. But measuring performance is more about, you know, how far have we achieved things and how far uh, have we adhered to the plan that we had. So that's what we're focusing on when it comes to performance measurement. And that's what you will be learning here, various, various techniques or various uh, calculation methods to, you know, determine uh, the performance level and how, how far have we uh, implemented the uh, things that we have actually planned out. And are there any, you know, variances? from what we have planned. If there are any variances, how can we reduce that? So th these are the kinds of things that you will be uh, expected to learn from uh, the part E of the syllabus. Now, these set of syllabus are kind of uh, common and uh, I mean, common in the sense, uh, we have uh, been learning that for quite a few years now. The, the syllabus has contained this particular set of topics for quite a few years now, but recently, not uh, uh, by recently, I mean from the uh, previous, I would say, what do you call it? Syllabus area year, I would say, because KCC changes the syllabus every from every September to June, right? So, uh, in the previous previous year, what they did was they also added an additional syllabus part, which is employability and technology skills. So this is the uh, basic, I would say, computer based skills that you need to have. That's basically all it is. And this is something that we cover. It's it's not a you know a theoretical area that you have to learn by heart or you don't have to like learn what Excel is or what is it, what are its functionalities, et cetera. You just have to learn how to use or how to present your answer using the uh, you know, spreadsheet technology or using the word processor technology. That's basically it. And we have you know, done a lot of questions in the uh, like CBE environment for you to understand that as well. And uh, 
Another thing was that we, uh, it, it's all about using the CB environment effi efficiently. And uh, that's again, yet again, something that uh, that's embedded throughout the set of questions that you have within the video question marathon. So uh, just, uh, you know, note down those efficiency points or uh, tips and tricks, I would say, uh, you know, note, note down that just for your reference so that you can adapt that when practicing questions as well. So yeah. That's basically the entire syllabus of uh, performance management. Now, so that's basically all about the syllabus. Now moving on to the exam structure. <clears throat> so now that we've understood what it is that we have to learn, let's take a look at as to what the exam is and you know uh, what are the tactics that we can adopt in the exam. <clears throat> so as you know, uh, PM is a three hour exam and we have three sections, section A, B, and C. And in section A, we have 15 multiple choice questions. Each carries two marks. There's no negative marking or anything like that. It's just uh, two marks. If you get the answer right, then you'll get two full marks. If you get it wrong, then two marks are gone. That's basically how it is. And we, we have a total of 30 marks available in section A. <clears throat> And in section B, we have objective type questions or OTQs. Uh, and we have like three OTQs within section B, each carrying 10 marks each, and yet again, a total of 30 marks. Now, when it comes to the multiple choice questions, most people uh, you know, think that uh, you know, it's multiple choice questions. So obviously you might get you know, an answer correctly, even if you randomly choose some things, right? So that's not necessarily uh, possible here. And I believe a few of you have the experience regarding that as well, right? So uh, it's, all, uh, it's all, especially when it comes to exams like PM or even FM, uh, just to mention that as well. Uh, they, they tend to find these questions within section B to be more difficult than any other uh, syllabus area. That's a common comment that I've received from a lot of students. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. And I would say, in your overall plan of practicing questions, I would give a bit more priority to the multiple choice questions. Try to find out as many variety of uh, you know, multiple choice questions as you have from uh, whatever resources that, that is available to you. That's something that I would uh, highly recommend. <clears throat> now, coming back to the third uh, section, that is section C, constructive response questions. And we have 40 marks available here, which is, uh, which is scored from two 20 mark questions. So yet again, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to constructive response questions, this is an area that you know, students tend to perform poorly as per the previous uh, examiner's report. And the reason being they, they're primarily focused on all the calculation uh, you know, related uh, part of those questions. And uh, let, I can tell you that each and every question uh, when, uh, in this particular uh, section are a mix of both. It has a it has a great deal of uh, calculation aspect to it, as well as theoretical aspects as well. You will have to practically explain, uh, you know, the change in numbers or why it has changed or provide a reason for that. So that's that's something that is expected of you uh, by the examiner. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, don't just, uh, you know, try to read through the theoretical answers, try to practice it, uh, you know, uh, in your, let's say, Excel or, uh, you know, word processor, et cetera. So that's the overall exam structure. Now moving on to another aspect that is time allocation. So uh, I believe uh, Ruchi, you have uh, you know already attempted a few uh, uh, exams, right? So do you face any sort of you know uh, challenge in the time related aspect? Just want your input on that. Uh, uh, Vishnu, yeah, uh, on time allocation. Uh, I think uh, I need to increase uh, my speed. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, extra 20 minutes because uh, I covered A section first, then C section. And then when I reached out to B section, I saw that one question left always. Okay. From As B in section. one whole scenario. Uh, uh, yes, there are three questions okay. in B section. So one question is right. always left. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you please suggest how would I, I mean, manage my yeah, time on sure, this? Because sure. see, okay. every question is important for marking, and mm -hmm. in spite of uh, the thing that I I could do that questions, but uh, lack of time, I could not attempt mm -hmm. that. 
right right i can so uh, sir i it. also want to yeah. add up on this ki mm -hmm. i gave financial reporting my results are awaited uh, mm -hmm. i did that by self study and actually what i faced is that i uh, spend most of my time in mcq part and then i do uh, c section c part and very much uh, less time uh, left so i can't complete both the c section uh, you know properly or can't give much time to that so my okay. c section always uh, Uh, yeah i so do you yeah. adapt adopt any sort of you know time strategy perhaps you know when attempting the paper in the previous any paper it could be fr it could be you know pm itself sir i like sir i give fr so i i now i am uh, realizing that i should uh, give a section uh, 20 like section c part first i'm not i don't think i am right okay. i i'm confused about it uh okay when it comes to the order in which you can attempt the uh, particular paper there's no such thing as you know uh there's no strategy as to what order you should attend attempt each section like uh, i should attempt section c first so that i can just uh, you know randomly uh, round off the answer in the uh, randomly select the answers in you know section a or section b there's no such order to that but uh well i personally prefer the you know the order that's already given there because i would primarily focus on the mcqs i'll tell you why the reason is that initially i would you know take some time to think out the answer right and uh, comparatively i can tell you that when it comes to section a and section b if i'm comparing the section a and section b or in other words the mcqs as well as case studies the most difficult part would obviously be the mcqs right uh i don't i don't i don't know it could differ of course uh, depending upon the people but uh based on the you know student feedback from various exams and uh you know from my personal experiences as well i find the uh you know multiple choice questions would be way difficult because it's it's all a bit tricky or there could be some sort of trick hiding there right a, a tricky aspect to it and information that we may miss out if we are you know too under too much pressure so that's basically why i would prioritize the multiple choice questions first so when during my exams i usually attempted uh, you know the section a and section uh, section b first and then move on moved on to section c i'll tell you i'll, I'll tell you another reason for that <clears throat> so let's say that i am attempting section c first okay so i've uh, you know worked through all the case study questions i've presented everything completely fully etc and when it comes to the section b and section a i'm a bit more pressured right because uh, i i already had maybe uh it's a 3 hour exam so i already utilized my uh first hour to attempt the scenario based question or first one and a half hours for some people uh to attempt the first two questions and now i'm i could be a bit out of time that's the feeling that we get right so uh if i'm a bit out of time or if i'm a bit too uh, pressured to write the mcqs then chances are you'll get most of the mcqs wrong because you know you you may tend to or there's a risk that you might miss out on uh a critical information which would have been required to get the correct answer so what i would do is i would just prioritize the uh multiple choice questions first because a uh, that's or the uh, the first reason for that would be that uh you know these two sections or the multiple choice has the majority of marks there i mean it's 60 marks if i can perform well there then you know section c can be uh comparatively easier another reason for that is that uh, you know if, if i get something wrong in the mcqs then i lose out on for example uh, you might have seen questions where uh, you have to choose options right like rather than choosing one answer you may have to select more than one answer in an mcq right so in those questions even if you get one option wrong you you lose out on the complete two marks right you get my point so initially uh i'll answer these kinds of question and keep it aside but if i am out of time for section c what i could do is instead of you know uh randomly you know selecting the multiple choice i would rather uh, rather than selecting randomly selecting the multiple choice questions i would rather you know provide a basic answer in section c which would at least score me uh, maybe one or two marks like for example if you are let's say uh, let's say that you are you only have one more question to attempt and you have like 10 minutes left if that is the case then you can utilize that particular 10 minutes to perhaps provide a format for your answer or uh, you know just write the uh, the basic calculations to get, get at least one or two marks but 
if it's the other way around, if I'm prioritizing section C, then at the end, at the last 10 minutes, you will be left with maybe five or, uh, yeah, let's say five MCQs. If that's the case, then you can't just, you'll only, the only option that you have left is, is, is just to randomly select the, you know, options. That's basically it. So I would just prioritize, uh, I, I hope, you, hope you understood my point here. So uh, I hope you prioritize the MCQs first when it comes to the PM exam. <clears throat> now, speaking more on the time allocation, uh, one of the reasons that you have uh, a problem with time management is one, it could be due to lack of practice. And secondly, it could be due to the fact that you don't have a strict time strategy. So let's clear both of these now. So when it comes to time allocation, ACC recommends an approach of using 1.8 minutes per mark. I'm sure that you've already heard of that. But what I would do is I would rather take a conservative approach here. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can, uh, for section A and section B, I would take around an hour and 40 minutes, right? So what am I doing here? I'm just, uh, you know, uh, taking the time as 1.5 minutes per mark so that I can get some buffer time, which I can, you know, utilize a bit more efficiently. I'll get to that. Uh, but before that, so, so section A and section B, I'm going to, you know, complete both of these in an hour and 40 minutes. And when it comes to section C, we have uh, 220 mark questions. So when it comes to two, 220 mark questions, for each question, I'm going to take seven minutes for reading and planning and 30 minutes to write the answer. So let me just explain the uh, categorization here. What is reading and planning and what is uh, writing? So first of all, uh, what, why do we need a reading and planning here? Because attempting a case study question is a step-by-step -step approach. The first thing that you would obviously have to do is to read the requirements, right? Because we have to understand what is needed so that we can provide the answer appropriately. So read the requirements, that's, that's step one. <clears throat> and secondly, we read through the scenario, we highlight all the important points. And thirdly, we think of an answer in our heads, right? So that's basically the third step. That's basically what reading and planning is all about. You don't normally just read the scenario and go straight to the answer, but you just, Take a few moments, it could be 30 seconds, it could be one minute, it could be one and a half minute, it could be anything. It depends upon, of course, your speed as well. So you take this time to just think of a structure for your answer in your mind. And then you start writing your answer. That's something, uh, that's a practice that I would, you know, highly recommend uh, to everyone. Because, uh, you know, right, writing, just reading the requirements, reading the scenario and getting straight to the answer is, even though it seems to be, uh, a bit more quicker or more efficient approach, there are chances that you might, you know, forget, forget a point that you had already talked part of. That, that can happen, in, you know, when you're under exam pressure. So, yeah. <clears throat> so take seven minutes to, uh, you know, read and plan the particular question and then 30 minutes to write it. That's, that's uh, an approach that I would recommend. And the, I'll tell you the reason why I'm telling you this particular time strategy uh, at this point in time. Well, this, this is basically because I want you to, practice this particular time strategy. Of course, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, different set of people, uh, I can, I do understand that, you know, some people are quick readers, so they can maybe, uh, you know, conduct the reading and planning aspects in maybe five minutes or even four minutes. So uh, I would say just try to practice questions using this time strategy so that you can be, be, become a bit more compatible with it, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. And yeah, you will get uh, a buffer time of, I believe, six to seven minutes, perhaps. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, so maybe uh, close to 10 minutes. So you might get some buffer time close to 10 minutes. And during this time, what you have to do is you'll have to, you know, uh, ask yourself this question, where can I score more marks? So should I invest this, uh, you know, 10 minutes in uh, the section C, where I can, you know, provide some additional answers? Or should I uh, you know, just uh, focus more on the MCQ part. It, it all depends upon that particular, uh, the status that you're in during your exam. So yeah, it, it's always, you know, great to keep that buffer time with you. And of course, yeah, there's also these, uh, questions that you might flag off, right? So you can maybe attend those in this buffer time as well. <clears throat> so yeah, I hope you've under understood the strategy. Do you have any questions in relation to this? Yes. Yeah. So okay. timing part, it's clear. One question about the syllabus. Uh, last time mm -hmm. uh, I I read that correlation and regression. So this time mm -hmm. also it's covered under the syllabus? 
Yeah, that would be covered under your syllabus. Yeah, I, I, I am in the process of, uh, you know, uh, you know, including that as well. You see, when it comes to correlation and regression, even though it's uh, like a complex topic, I don't necessarily see that being tested in the past few exam sessions. That's something uh, that I'm still, you know, looking forward to uh, researching a bit more on. So it, it will be, and in the, I believe in the previous session, uh, I actually kind of discussed that in the live session. That's what I remember. So yeah, uh, anyway, way, so we will uh, try to include that within the syllabus or what we can do is we can, uh, you know, uh, discuss that in a live session. I'll, I'll take a look at it and we'll let you know regarding that. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So yeah, uh, we've looked at the syllabus, we looked at the exam structure and the time allocation. Then I believe the next phase is, uh, you know, how to prepare for the exam. So this is basically a step-by-step -step approach. I can uh, tell you that. Step one is obviously to learn the syllabus. And when I say learn the syllabus, I, I don't mean just the syllabus areas that are frequently tested in the exams. I mean 100% of the syllabus. And, uh, you know, try to avoid question sporting and things like that. That's, that's, that's just, uh, you know, a risky strategy. So, yeah, moving on to step two, which is basically to practice questions. And uh, don't just, uh, you know, uh, constrain yourself just to the resources that we provide, just uh, use the exam kits uh, that are available to you or any sort of, you know, any other resources from any other of uh, one of your friends or colleagues, et cetera. Try, try to practice as many as possible. The key here is to, you know, practice the tough questions, not, not the easy kind, but yeah, practice as many variety of tough questions as you can. And uh, you know, you should allot yourself some time to practice these sets of questions. And uh, during this particular time, even if you're done a bit early with the practice, then, you know, practice the same questions once again. That's, that can also, uh, you know, help in your preparation. Just, just keep on practicing. That's, uh, that's equally important as to, you know, learning 100% of the syllabus. And then there is step three, which is to do the question papers, or in other words, the past papers, which are available in the ACC website. Because that's like the, you know, the ultimate questions that you will be faced in your main exam, right? So uh, try to practice uh, as many past papers as you can uh, before attempting the main exams. And along with that, there's also another resource that uh, that's known as the examiner's report. Have you heard of it before? Or is this your first time yes. using this article? You have, yeah, right? I've heard. Okay. I've, I have heard before. Ruchi? This is fourth attempt. Okay. Of okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of PM uh -huh. only. Yeah. I could not mm -hmm. clear it. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, no, I mean, uh, like, have you taken a look at the examiner's report before? You have, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and, and uh, uh, I, uh, I got an idea from your videos that uh, uh, the MCQ, which you already, which you just told that it's a tricky part. Yes, it is because in examination, I got confused with those kind of questions because sometimes they they do, uh, did minor changes in increase or decrease in word like that or not mm -hmm. or something like that they did very minor changes and mc uh, the objective questions were very very tricky the mm -hmm. theoretical part so now it's yeah. clear to me and i am confident now that i will clear this this time mm -hmm. okay okay that's uh, great to know and uh, when it comes to the examiner's report, uh, just to mention for DB as well, uh, you know, there are a few, you know, MCQs that are, that are mentioned within the examiner's reports itself. And these are like the, you know, the toughest MCQs that has been tested in that particular session. So practicing these can also, you know, give you an idea of the nature of the questions that can come up. So, yeah. Just to put that there. And then there is step five, which is do a mock exam. And this is a really crucial step, which is, uh, because, you know, writing a mock exam not only lets you know yourself as to what are the areas of improvements, but I can tell you myself as to what are your, uh, you know, areas of improvement as well. So just attempt a mock exam. This will be, you know, conducted a few weeks close to your exam. So, yeah, try to, try to you know, uh, be ready for that mock exam so that I can get a complete picture as to uh, what are your weak areas and what are the areas of improvement, etc. I will, of course, be personally reviewing that and providing you with the improvement points. So, yeah, don't worry regarding that aspect. 
and you won't uh, you won't receive a generic feedback rather you would be given a very specific or personal feedback so yeah <clears throat> and of course the final step is basically to go write your exam yes I have one question and uh, you talked about step four that is read the examiner's report. So mm -hmm. where did I find, I find it? And it's where within I find the it? website itself. Uh, give me a minute, I'll just let me know when the screen is visible. <clears throat> yes, yes. Hold on a second. Okay. So what you have to do is you just have to go to the study support resources over here click on acca qualification go to pm and then there would be a area where it says examiner's report just click on that <clears throat> and there you have it so these are basically the examiner's report for various sessions so you can just read through these and maybe practice some of the MCQs mentioned in that, and maybe even read through the examiner's report so that you can get an understanding as to what the examiner expects, just for your case as well. So uh, booking your exam is just a minor thing that we just have to you know, uh, worry about, I would say. The more things that you have to worry about is basically, first of all, to you know, focus on the syllabus and you know, what we know. So yeah, prepare well for that. Using the steps that I've just mentioned, first of all, learn the entire syllabus, practice questions as much as you can, uh, do the past papers, read the examiner's report, do the mock exam, that's a really important step. And finally, to go write your exam. Now, this is a step-by-step -step process, I would say. You can't do uh, you know, step three first or step, uh, step four first, right? So it's a step-by-step -step process. And there's something regarding a step-by-step -step process that I'd like to explain as well. Can you see what I have in my hand here? Is it visible? I guess not. Yeah. yeah. Is it visible now? Yes. What is this? It's a board. board. It's a board, right? Board. A paper board. So how do you make this paper board? So we basically follow a step-by-step -step process here as well, right? So if you like miss out on one of the steps, what would happen? Would you get the end result? That is the paper board? No, right? So that's exactly how these steps works as well. If you miss out on one, then ultimately you won't get the end result because step two, practice, practice, and practice. It's really important because you need to know how to apply your knowledge in the exam. If you miss out on the mock exams, then chances are you will be a bit more nervous in the exam and miss out on a few MCQs. So step, uh, follow this particular step-by-step -step process uh, to its core to uh, strictly so that you can, uh, you know, get your end result that is, uh, you know, to just clear the exam uh, with flying colors. That's basically it. So yeah, that's basically how to prepare the basic step-by-step -step process. <clears throat>